So why do we talk about media ownership? Um, the one reason that we're talking about media ownership is that there are there is more and more concentrated ownership of media, right? Not just news media, cinema, television, all the, all the different kinds of media. There are, like I said, there are smaller and smaller group of com companies who control more and more media um, all, around, all around the world. So that's the reason why we have to look at it. And it's not just that it's fewer companies control more, it's that these companies are transnational. But they don't just own media in New Zealand, but in Australia, New Zealand, America, you know, many different places around the world. Right? And they also, meet, companies that own media don't just own media. They own a variety of different kinds of industries. If it's tourism or manufacturing or weapons or something like that, uh, they own a wide variety of not just media, but non-media kinds of companies. So this will definitely have an influence on what they do. There's also been a shift towards entertainment and populism and infotainment, uh, especially with the internet, because these are ways to make more money. Right? For example, if you're creating, if you're a journalist, um, and you can take a lot of time to write a very serious, in-depth, thoughtful, you know, feature article that's thousands of words long, and it takes you months to do lots of research and figure this out, right? And then you produce just one thing. Or you can be in your computer and you can write five or six or seven stories a day that are light and entertaining, that, uh, that are about movies and, and, you know, not serious kind of stuff, right? So, which actually attracts more of an audience, right? More people want to be lightly entertained by the media that they consume. Right? When you look at the top grossing movies, they're very entertaining kind of movies. They're not very serious thinking movies. Right? Um, and the view is more and more that the audience are consumers. Right? Like I talked about in the lecture about, about journalism, uh, there's some idea that, that the media is public service, that it's supposed to serve the citizens and inform people about what's going on. Right. When TV started, people were very excited because they said, oh, it's great. We can have lots of educational TV programs and teach people about math and science and things like that. But he found that people, uh, that TV stations don't make money doing that. They make money by treating the audience as, as consumers. And there's been an increasing commodification of media content and audiences, like I said. The, the whole purpose for most media companies is just to make as much profit as possible. So this changes a lot the, what they do and how they do it. Uh, I discussed this a little bit before, uh, but we'll go over it again. What are the different kinds of media ownership? Uh, one type is media that's owned by a community. And maybe that's not for profit. Right? There are some big not-for-profit media companies, but usually they're, they're, they're quite small. Um, they're the TV station or a newspaper for like a city or for a, a university campus or something like that. Um, <clears throat> they can be a bit bigger. Like in the United States, you have the National Public Radio or the Public Broadcasting System, which just get their money from donations from people. Um, they don't make a profit, they just have funding, donations from people, donations from corporations, and that donations they use are what, they, or what is their budget, and that's it. Right? They're not after getting a big, big audience to sell to advertisers or something like that. Right? <clears throat> you also have public media or state-owned media, right? and this is where, um, like the BBC, the BBC doesn't have any advertisements. Right? Anybody who owns a TV or radio pays a license fee to the government and they use that as the budget uh, for the BBC. Right? And then most organizations are privately owned media organizations. Um, you own by individuals or family dynasties or uh, media conglomerates, like we said, where they own hundreds of different newspapers and TV stations and movie companies and things like that. Um, and then obviously you have things that are kind of mixed. 
where maybe they're owned by the government, but they also have to make a, a profit, like a lot of the media in China or, or uh, Northern Europe or something like that. Right? They have advertisements, but they do get some funding from the government. Uh, and they kind of make a profit, but they're not like billions of dollars a year of profit. Right? So there's also mixed kind of companies. Now for profit motive, um, it, in the textbook for the class, it's, it says um, the money in media, the money comes from either consumers or from advertising. In practice, many outlets combine the two to give themselves a, a flexible stream of income. I know the textbook's a little bit old, but this is still kind of true. You have some outlets where the, where the money only comes from the consumers, you have some where that only comes from advertisers, and then you have in the middle where it's mixed. <clears throat> so for example, if you buy a book or you buy a DVD, right, physically, you buy, you go to a, a, a website and you pay money to buy the TV show. Right, then the money just comes just from the consumer. Right, you're not watching any advertisements, you are just, all of the money just comes from you. Right, and there are some streaming services where you, you can only get the TV show, or you can only get the movie or the music by paying a subscription. Right, and then there are no advertisements and everything just comes from your money. Right, and at the same time, when you go to see live music, May, there'll be some advertisements, but you know most of the money that you pay to see the band, um, that's how they get. The, that's how they make their money, right? And the same with theater, with not not movies, but but um, theater actors in the theater, right? And then there's mixed, right? Newspapers and magazines they have advertisements, but you also have to buy them, right? When you go to a movie theater, you you pay for the ticket, but before the movie, there's like 20 minutes of advertisements. Right? That's why many people like to show up a bit late for the movie because then you don't have to watch the advertisements. Right? So the movie theater makes money from the tickets and selling the audience to the advertisers. Uh, and some streaming services are like this. Maybe you pay a little bit for a subscription, but it also has some advertisements sometimes. Right? It depends on, on the service. <clears throat> when only advertisers, this is getting uh, less and less frequent. Um, traditionally for broadcast media, you don't pay anything for broadcast. You don't pay anything, you just have a television or a radio and it, it gets the signal and then you watch TV or radio. You don't pay the TV station anything, right? So therefore the only way they can get money is from advertising, right? And free streaming services. A lot of services where the streaming is free, it'll stop every once in a while to show you advertisements. Right, YouTube does this, a lot of other uh, video streaming websites, or music streaming websites. You listen to five or six songs and then there's an advertisement. And you listen to five, six more songs, there's an advertisement. Right, on YouTube, before you watch the video, there's like a 10 second, 20 second advertisement. Maybe in the middle, there's another advertisement. Right? So there's a broad range of, of ways that they make money. Um, of course, one thing that's missing from this is when, when they get money from donations or when they get money from the government. Um, but for-profit media, this is, this is the different ways uh, that they usually do it. Yeah. Now, most media companies are large, and they're getting larger and larger. They're mostly private, and they mostly, the orientation is mostly to make a lot of profit. Right? Before, it used to be a lot more subscription-based, uh, and this changed, right? A lot of newspapers in the past, you paid a subscription and that was it, and the newspapers uh, didn't have advertising. And then they realized they could make more money by, by, by getting money from advertisers. Right? New media companies that start up, usually their goal is to start up, get popular, get big, attract some audience, and then hopefully a larger media company will buy them. Right? There used to be hundreds of thousands of different websites and, and internet companies in the 90s. And eventually Google and, and Facebook and, and the big, big companies bought all the smaller ones, right? So it's very difficult for you to start your own new media company because you have competition from these big media companies who've existed for a long time. And if you do start a new media company like TikTok, 
or, or you know, maybe somebody, and it is very popular, somebody will want to buy it from you for billions of dollars. And then it becomes part of that big company. And we'll give some examples of that later on. And we also have corporatization. A lot of media beforehand was owned by families, especially a lot of newspapers. Right? Um, you know, for example, the Washington Post. Um, it was owned by a family, by the Graham family. And then the father gave it to the son, and then the son died, and the wife took over the company, and then her son took over the company. Right? It went from generation to generation. Right? But a lot of those arrangements have ended, and now they're just part of a big corporation. And the corporation just wants to make a profit, a large profit. Before, if the family owned it, it's just the family wants to make money, so that the family can have money, so they can buy food. And, and that's fine, it's good to make profit, right? but the whole purpose of it isn't to make as much profit as possible. But for a corporation, if a corporation owns a newspaper and they own a movie company, and the movie company makes a lot of profit and the newspaper doesn't, that's not good business. So you want to push the newspaper to make more and more money, right? By firing staff or creating lighter entertainment media or something like that. By having the journalists write more and more stories and then you save money and you make more money and you make more profit. And media companies can be owned in many different ways, in, in, in vertically, horizontally, or internationally. Right? For example, vertical integration is when you own the production and the distribution. So you own the TV station and you own the website that shows the TV station, and you own the internet company that you get the internet from. Right? You own the newspaper and you own the company that sells the newspapers and you own the company that, that makes paper. Right? If you own all the different steps, right? you own the movie studio, you own the movie distribution company and you own the movie theater, right? um, then you can make even more money. Right? So for example, uh, for, for example, Disney, which I'll talk about later, Right, they own the movies, they produce it, and then you can only watch it on Disney+. Plus. Right, so they own all the different ways to view the different kinds of media. So if you want to see anything from Disney, then you, you, your only choice is to go to Disney+. Plus. And there's horizontal immigration, integration, where a TV a company will own a TV station and a movie company and radio, and then an internet service provider or cable company and they'll own a record company, and they'll own a game developer, and maybe they'll own something outside of media. Right? And then of course there's inter transnational integration, where media companies from around the world are all owned by the same company. Right? So these are the three kinds, and they can have a different effect on, on media. Right? Another aspect is that a lot of media organizations are tiered, and that there are elites Serious, very famous ones at the top. As you go down, uh, they get less famous and less influential. So you have media outlets at the top that kind of set the agenda, right? So you have BBC or CNN or something like that. And if they cover a news story, then many other news outlets want to cover it too, because they look up to these news companies as the the, the big ones. Right? Disney or another major movie company, if they start to do something with movies, then all the other movie studios will start to do that. Right? Like with Pixar. Right? Pixar was the first company to produce a lot of computer animated movies. And they were the only ones who did full length computer animated movies for a couple of years. And then all the other studios start to try to develop their own software and their own uh, way to make lots of animated movies. Right? And then within a couple of years, DreamWorks and, and Warner Brothers and everybody else start to try and produce their own animation, computer animated movies. Right? So Disney or Pixar kind of led the way for that. Um, and we have to think about centralization too. A lot of media production is centralized in certain places. Right? If you want to be very, very successful in the movie industry, Zhuhai is not the best place to do it. 
you would be much better to go to Guangzhou or probably Beijing or Hangzhou or something like that. There's Hangzhou. There's lots of other places where there's the media production is centered on it. Right? In the United States, if you want to be on TV or movies, it's New York or Los Angeles. That's it. If, you, if, it's London, if it's UK, then it's London or Paris or whatever. There's some central location in, the, in countries usually where most of the media production happens. Right? So this has a big influence, right? Look at all the movies that you've seen. Uh, look at American movies. How many of them are set in New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco? Because that's where most of the things are, are filmed. Right? So you get your view of America is just, oh, it's New York City. Um, I want to tell you a, a story uh, briefly about what can happen with media concentration. Right? Um, back in 1874, uh, this man named Alexander Graham Bell, you know Alexander Graham Bell, yeah? He invented the, the, the telephone, basically. Right? Many different people developed it, but you know, okay. Um, and he started a company called AT&T, which is still a company that, that exists today. And the AT&T started to connect people, started to make a phone network. Right? And they, have, you have, and they were connecting buildings and houses and apartment buildings. They were connecting everybody together with phones, um, which was great in the city. Because everybody in the city lives very close to each other. Um, but it didn't work in the countryside. Right? In the city, you have one kilometer and maybe you get 100 subscribers. In the countryside, maybe you have 10 kilometers and you just get one subscriber. Right? Uh, but the government wanted everybody in the United States to have phones. Right? It's the people in the countryside that really need a phone. Right? If there's a medical emergency or fire or something like that. It's the people in the countryside who really need phones. So the government agreed to give AT&T a monopoly. They said, you build telephones. You, everybody in the United States gets a telephone and then you have a monopoly on the telephone industry. Um, so AT&T, over, over many years, basically was able to connect every single person in the United States. Right? If you built a new house, if you, if you built a house anywhere, you call AT&T and you say, I want a phone. And they have to bring the wire to your house to give you a phone. Right? Um, but the problem is that the, the, the customer service for AT&T got really bad because they had a monopoly. There's no competition. Right? So many different people filed an antitrust suit against AT&T and then eventually, uh, 10 years later, the government decided to break it up into seven different companies. Um, and this is really great in the 80s. There were seven different phone companies. So you had a lot more competition. You had many uh, different choices. Right? And the price went down and the service got better. Um, and then in the 90s, all the telephone companies started to buy each other. So in the end, most cities in America now only have two different phone companies. Before they had seven, <laughs> now they just have two, because all the other companies bought each other. So the competition is a lot less now. The customer service has gone down uh, again, because now there is most markets, there's just two companies providing telephone and an internet. Right? So this is the bad thing that can happen when you have more and more media concentration. Right? The government in the 1990s got rid uh, of regulations. The government had regulations about, that that about companies buying each other, but the government got rid of those regulations. So. Um, in the United States, in the 1980s, 90% of media was controlled by 50 companies. Um, now it's like four companies. Right? If you go back 100 years, in New York City, there was hundreds and hundreds of newspapers. Now there's like three or four. And they're all owned by, by big companies, by big multinational companies. Right? Um, for example, in local market, in local television, local radio, there's two companies, Sinclair Broadcast Media and Tribune Media. These two companies own the vast majority of local radio and local television. Right. So they'll buy the TV stations in 193 cities across the United States. 
Tribune Media, the same thing. They own a couple of big newspapers and they own a bunch of TV stations and a bunch of radio stations. Um, and this gives, this gives these media companies a lot of power and it, make, it, gives it, it makes it very easy for them to make money. So Sinclair, since it controls so many different TV and radio stations, they, own, they need to hire fewer people. Right? If you have a rock radio station, why do you need to have 193 different companies, different radio stations? You have one. You have one group of people in New York City, and they decide all the music for all 193 radio stations. And then you save a lot of money. Right? Instead of 193 different studios around the country, you just have one. Right? But then, no matter where you go, the music is the same, because it's one group of people in New York City deciding the music that everybody across the United States listens to. Right? So there is less and less competition, there's less diversity, right? there's less choice by people. Um, I made this chart four, four years ago, and every time when I do a class about this topic, I have to keep updating the chart. Now, this is what it looked like in 2017, and then now it looks like this. So I had to do two things to change it. One, there was the companies bought each other. So I had to change the, 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 the rows. And then also a new kind of media became much more popular, which is streaming. So Comcast bought, um, you know, Disney bought 20th Century Fox, Warner Media bought AT&T, right? There was a bunch of these companies, yeah. <clears throat> um, so for example, back in the day, Time Warner did not have distribution. They didn't own an internet company, they didn't own a phone company, they didn't own movie theaters. So what they did was they bought AT&T. Right, so now they have a company to distribute it. Back in the day, they, none, none of these companies had streaming services, but now they do. They all developed their own streaming services in the last couple of years. So anything that's made by Comcast, anything that's on, uh, that's on NBC, any TV show by MSNBC, or a movie that's produced by Universal Movie Studios, you can only see those now on the Peacock streaming service. Right. Yeah. And then at the same time, this isn't including Apple or YouTube, uh, because they're still, they're still their own companies. So YouTube is owned by Google, Apple is owned by Apple. Right. Um, so that brings up another question. But what about Apple? What about Google? And what about all these new media companies? They're not on this list, are they? Right. Most people get their media now from new media. Right? When we look at this kind of chart, this is still old media, TV and cable and things like that. Right? And this is still very important that a lot of people get their media this way. But as time moves on, it will change. More and more people will get their uh, media content from internet and from streaming services and things like that. Right? From kind of my generation on, as, as my generation gets older, Right? Maybe my parents and my you know, grandparents and people like that, they still watch TV and they don't do streaming or something like that. But in 10, 15 years, that will change completely. So we have to look at new media concentration as well. The definition of media is, is actually changing because of convergence. Right? It was very easy before. There's a movie company and they show movies in a movie theater. Um, as many of you wrote in your, your short essay, your first short essay, uh, the effect of internet on um, journalism and TV and cinema and those kind of things, you said, well, one big change is that it's all gone online. It's all gone to the same device. Right? 20 years ago, you, you didn't listen to radio and watch TV on your computer or your phone. Right? But now, because of convergence, it's all come together on these, on, on these devices. So it makes media ownership much, much more complicated uh, than before. Mm -hmm. For example, we have a company called Alphabet, which is the com parent company for YouTube and for Google. Now, YouTube creates some TV shows. They create their own movies, a little bit. 
but they also stream other people's movies and TV shows, and they stream user-generated content online. Right? But Google is just a search engine. Right? So they're very different kinds of, of media companies. Right? But Alphabet also owns Android. They bought Android back in the day. They also own Chrome. Right? These are operating systems for computers. These are web browsers. Right? Chrome, uh, Android, you have the Android Store, which sells, also sells movies. It, was it called Google Play, Play Store or something like that? Right? There's all these app stores now, and they're making money by selling apps. They're making money by selling movies on your, on your phone and TV shows and, and music and things like that. And so it's, it's very complicated. What kind of company is it? It's an internet company, but they also make media content and they sell and they stream media content. And they have web browsers and operating systems, and it's, you know, it's, it's such a huge influence that they have on the media industry. Right? Facebook is, is a similar thing. They have uh, chat, uh, they have instant messaging services like WhatsApp, they have social media things like Instagram, uh, but they also own Oculus VR. You know what that is? VR, it was on your quiz. Virtual reality. Right, you put the goggles on. Right. Why would Facebook? Facebook is social media. Why would they buy a company that does virtual reality? So they can make more money. They want to have many different kinds of companies that they own. Right? So then Facebook can make games or something using this technology. Right? The same thing with Amazon. Amazon used to be just a company that sold books online. And then they started selling anything. Then, then they started selling clothes and home appliances and things like that. And then they started selling movies and books and music, uh, uh, digital books and movies and music through their, through their service. Right? So they have Kindle for ebooks, Audible for uh, audiobooks. Right? And then they bought a supermarket, a real supermarket in real life. Right? And then they bought a TV studio. So they're a media company. <laughs> they're a media company, but they sell stuff online, but they also sell food offline, but they sell books and they sell music, and then they make movies and TVs, TV shows now. Right? Our definition is changing because of it. Verizon is a phone company. Right? They're mobile internet mostly, but they also buy lots of websites like Yahoo and Flickr and Tumblr, and they bought a news, an online newspaper. So it's, it's becoming increasingly confusing as, as time goes on because all the companies are uh, converging. Right? And convergence is not just you can watch music and movies on your, on your phone, it's these companies are converging at, at the same time. Right? And this has happened historically over time. For example, Facebook, um, if you start at the bottom, Facebook bought a company, FriendFeed, in 2009. And this was a company that had good algorithms for, match, for, matching, uh, for matching people with other people. Right? It, was, it was very good, uh, they had good uh, programming for uh, social networking. Right? And then, like I said, they bought Instagram and Oculus and WhatsApp and, and Giphy, which is a company that has lots of GIFs, right? for $400 million. Right? They're buying all these different companies together so that they, uh, they can make a lot more money, so that they can have a wide variety of products that they sell. Right? Google, right? they bought Android in 2005, YouTube, different advertising, Motorola is a phone company, right? Fitbit, all these different, different kinds of technology companies. Right? Microsoft bought PowerPoint back in 1987, then email, then uh, online chatting, Skype, and then a phone company, and LinkedIn, a business social networking website, right? And this is how these companies get so big. They buy all these smaller, smaller companies. Right? The same thing with ByteDance. Right? They own TikTok, Total, they bought Musical.ly, which was an American kind of version of TikTok. 
right? They bought, they merged TikTok and Musical.ly together, and now there's probably more than 300 million users now. There's probably 600 to 700 million people using uh, these apps. Right? And what does TikTok make? They don't make anything. They help people make content, right? But TikTok has agreements with music companies. They reach out to music companies and they license their music. Right? Artists will work with TikTok to promote their new album. Right? The artist will be singing the song here and then the, the user will be singing the song here right? to promote their, their new music. So the definition of what we mean by media even is, is changing a lot as time goes on. And the biggest media companies in the world Right? A year ago, it, it looked like this, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, and then number four, we have Alibaba, and then Facebook, then Tencent, Verizon, Walt Disney, AT&T, all these different companies, right? But the pandemic uh, it changed a lot of things, and some companies got bigger, and some got smaller, right? Their value, some of them went down, some of them went up, um, but still, it's very odd to call these media companies because some of them are, you think of them as computer companies, but they produce content and they distribute content. Right? They own the internet service, they own the streaming service, they own all the different things together. Right? <clears throat> um, I'll quickly go through this case study of Walt Disney Company. Right? Walt Disney Company started uh, uh, almost 100 years ago making short little cartoons, like starring Mickey Mouse, right? But Walt Disney was a very smart guy, and he said, well, it's not enough money just to make these short cartoons uh, that will show uh, before a movie in the movie theater. He said, we need to have more kinds of income. So one of the first things they did was make stuffed animals of Mickey Mouse and Mickey Mouse t-shirts and, and many different kinds of merchandise with Mickey Mouse's face on it. Right? They wanted to make money off of the image of Mickey Mouse, not just the cartoons, the cartoons that he was starring in. Right? And this worked. Mickey Mouse got more famous because he was on merchandise everywhere. Right? Um, in 1937, they made their first full-length movie, Snow White and, and the Seven Dwarfs, which is an amazing technical achievement because it's a full-length movie in color that's animated. Right? And... <clears throat> Um, each of the seven dwarves has a name. In the original story, they didn't have names, but Disney said they need to all have names. They need to all have different personalities. Why? Merchandise. Right? Each dwarf has their own personality and have their name, and then you can sell the doll, you can sell other uh, merchandise related to all of the different seven dwarves. Right? In World War II, they made propaganda films for the U.S. government. In 1946, they started to make live-action movies, not just cartoons, right? In the 50s, they started to produce content for television. And then in the 1950s, they started to make theme parks, like Disneyland, and later on, Disney World. And then Paris Disney and Hong Kong Disney and Shanghai Disney and everything, right? So it's not just cartoons. It's cartoons and movies and films and theme parks, TV station, um, they start to make content not just for children, right? Uh, 2019, they had the Disney Plus streaming service we mentioned. Um, but one of the main things that Disney does is they acquire other brands. They acquire other uh, IP, other intellectual property from other companies by buying them. So for instance, in 1989, they bought Jim Henson Company, which made The Muppets and made Sesame Street and, and many other uh, you know, Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy and all those kinds of things, right? So then it increased the amount of intellectual property they owned. And they can create even more and more merchandise from this. Right? They bought a TV station, they bought Pixar in 2006, so then they have all the Toy Story characters and the Cars characters and Up and all that, right? Um, of course they bought Marvel, they bought Lucasfilm, which makes Star Wars, right? Um, 20th Century Fox more recently, right? So they just keep purchasing more and more and more companies, right? So now, half of the top grossing movies are Disney movies. 
And it's not just, like I said, it's not just media content, it's theme parks and real estate. They own hotels and resorts. They own an island that's just a complete Disney resort. Record companies, toys, video games, clothes, food, apps, everything. 